and welcome to episode 22 of Rushed Vibes. It's just us, the original Vibers. Um, kind of feels a little, little weird. We had two back-to-back episodes with guests. Um, one was a very big personality in a tiny package um and then of course we had our cousin mark who gave us a lot of great perspective um and good conversation just about policing and all that's taking place so it's just back to your regular mr and mrs rushed vibes regularly scheduled your regularly scheduled vibes so uh what's good with you i'm just still on this high from uh, our last episode with with cousin Mark, and then Salas was cool too. It was awesome having our oldest daughter here on the podcast with us, and everyone who's watched that episode has absolutely eaten it up and let us know about it. She's already got some some uh, punchlines or some coin phrases that people are, are reciting to us and literally and, and, and text messages. So that was that was fascinating, but. With Mark being here, uh, just we were talking about how he was just so even keel and just smooth, and but he was very, very open and, and very honest and, and very direct, and that was awesome. But I'm really excited about. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, traffic to the to the YouTube page uh, after that episode. I think Mark has a pretty wide network, so. Anyone who has been introduced to us from Cousin Mark, we appreciate you for watching. Hopefully, you're tuning into this episode, so we're happy to have you. Shout out. Welcome. To everyone who subscribed. We were at 49 subscribers earlier this week. We now sit at 64 on ooh, YouTube. Ooh. We were sitting at like 88 on Instagram. We're now at 99. Oh, so snap. So I need somebody. You be number 100. I need somebody to be number 100 to because I am paranoid that we're going to sit on 99 for a minute and it's going to drive me crazy. Like I'd rather be at 10 than 99 because if you watched our episode last week, I said we really wanted to focus on Instagram, get us to 100. Facebook is really weird. They won't let you use certain tools for creators until you hit a hundred likes or a hundred follows, depending upon which, which application you're using Facebook or Instagram. So once we hit 100, we get um, the status of having 100 uh, followers, but also some some beneficial tools on the back end for Instagram. So uh, if you're watching and you haven't already followed us on Instagram, go ahead and do so. I'll put the little uh, social media icon down down right here. Uh, Rush Vibes. Also connect with us on Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube, and uh, be sure to hit the like button if you if you like what we're what we're dishing out. So it's just been a hell of a week, a long week, two episodes in one week. Emergency pod. We put the put the signal in the sky. So. Like I said, I'm, I'm still on that high, but it's nice to be back. It is. Back to, uh, back to us. The how OG, we, how, the how original yeah. Vipers. Oh, I thought, see, I, I'm sorry, I got, in, I got a notification. I thought we might have got to follow while no, we were recording, we, we but didn't. somebody just liked the post. Appreciate you for liking, though. Thank Hope you. springs eternal, though. We'll get, we'll get that 100, but don't obsess over it. Oh, I'm obsessing. I'm the numbers, I'm the numbers guy. Here at Air and Rush Vibes. I'm just the go with the flow. I'm here. You Very. just tell me my cue. Someone has to keep us level headed. By us, I mean him. Yeah, that's me. So I'm rocking my um, plant power shirt. Why didn't you tell me I would have worn my matching shirt? Uh, I don't know. Sorry. But um, this is a t shirt from. A uh, future guest who we'll have here on Rush Vibes. I won't spoil it, but they uh, they really like plants, mm-hmm. which is why it's hashtag Plant Power. And it's so, not me. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not Jess, but I believe that person has had some influence. A lot over of Jessica. influence on me. So um, we are excited to have them on here shortly as well uh, in the in the near term. So we uh we've had another episode uh, previously, like tonight, and that episode is when we did a quote unquote movie review Mm -hmm. of uh, Malcolm and Marie, the Netflix original movie starring Zendaya and John David Washington of the Denzel Denzel Washington Washington. (laughs) and and, and Paulette, excuse me. Yes. 
so we're actually going to review a movie here tonight, uh, Two Distant Strangers. And I believe it's Oscar nominated this year. Oh. And um, it's a very short film. It's about 32 minutes. 32 minute runtime. Question, what is the classification of a movie? I thought there, is there no time span that makes short. a movie? It's a short film. But what's the classification of a film? I would assume longer than whatever the classification is I mean, of a, a short TV, film. A TV show is 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the show. So and TV shows have commercials. Okay. TV show episodes on Netflix are 30 minutes. I just want to know what are the, what determines something not just being like a, an episode. I don't know. We'd have to ask Google. Okay. Didn't you study film in college? No. I, did. Sure. I studied in English and communications. Yeah, but you took film classes. What are you drinking in, uh, your, in your fancy cup? Actually, mom got me this cup, and I got this sticker from the dollar store, and I stuck it on. Um, and it stayed. It's for cups. Frugal, frugal vibes here. Yeah. Um, I love the dollar store, especially the corporate the corporate one in the questionable neighborhood. Um, it's just a, a peach seltzer, a peach hard seltzer. Nothing fancy. Yeah. What about you? Drinking Legion. Oh. Bourbon. Shout out to my big brother, Donald, who uh, we call this our budget bourbon. <laughs> it's like it's only like 35 bucks a bottle. So um, get a good, good bourbon, solid bourbon for a, a decent, decent price. So um, Congratulations. I've, I've been dry here lately on Rush Vibe. You notice I've been drinking like water and red wine, red wine, sweet, my red wine, sweet w- red wine, which I was that sweet. I didn't get to try it. Sorry. Um, speaking to a coworker, <laughs> apparently it's. It's a sin to drink sweet red wine. And she said it's dry only. Shout out to Jamie. Um, but yes, I, I was dry from my, my bourbon for a while, so I had to go restock a little bit. So trying to build the collection back up. It's never going to be back and, to where it you was. Know, surprisingly, it's difficult to build a collection if you drink it all before <laughs> you get to the next bottle. So I've, I found out. So I, I'm having some some pains here recently. Mm. And uh your struggles. I've really. taught myself a very valuable lesson, and that is moderation is key. I've been trying to teach him this lesson for. And I'm not an alcoholic, though, so I just want to be. Clear. I have been trying to I teach enjoy him fine bourbon. this lesson the of moderation of for years now. Like when I like something, and maybe it's just the Ghanaian in me, like Africans like keep stuff. When I like something, I will just dabble with it a little bit. When he likes something, he's like, "I'm just gonna finish it all." And then look back. Don't no, tell me what don't, to do. Don't hold it because it I'm comes through hold, the, it comes I'm going to do what I want to do. Okay. Moderation. What's your opinion? Thank you. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the difference between he and I. And it drives me crazy because then he'll be out and he just looks like a lost puppy. And I'm like, well, if you had just rationed, thought, had foresight and looked towards the future, you'd still have some left. But no. So this is a lesson that he claims to have learned. But in three weeks, we're going to be right back drinking red wine that I haven't had a chance a to try. Yeah. Cool. You want to put some money on it? I just put a bottle of bourbon that I'm going to buy with <laughs> your money on it. <laughs> wow. Um, you know, I do want to mention before we get into uh, our movie review, which I, which I mentioned, um, do want to point out that we, we we touched on some pretty heavy topics earlier this week, especially in our conversation with uh, with Mark. Since then, um, there was the uh, body cam footage that was released from the 13 year old who was who was killed in uh, by police in Chicago, mm-hmm. I believe, last month. And um, also, there was a there was a mass shooting at a uh, FedEx facility. FedEx FedEx facility. Remember what what city it was in? Was it tennis? It wasn't in Virginia. No, I don't know. I, I, it, I honestly didn't look into it. I, I was like, at the point I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh. It like, was, I can't, it's, it's been can't, can't exhausting. Take this. I feel like there was something else. Uh, no, not that I can think of. Oh, well, I, well, here in Charlotte, locally, um, two transgender uh, women were, were killed. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, it was, it was targeted, I believe. Um, so hate crime, I guess you could yeah. classify it as. And um, that's definitely something that's, that's been on, on the rise here, here lately is, uh, targeted violence against transgenders among, you know, other, other groups. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's unfortunate, uh, local news here. So bringing all that up to say, uh, we, we really, uh, do need to, uh, 
pray for our <laughs> pray for our society and and country um but also as best you can you know just try to have um you know some some hope and and try to do the best you can to help society and in your individual interactions with people friends family strangers um try to have difficult conversations with with grace mm-hmm. and patience kind of like you know we had this week didn't necessarily um see eye to eye with everything that my cousin said but you know we're two we're two different people he's got a few years of life experience on me and and us so um but we definitely came away i came away with a better understanding um and i'm sure you did too so Mm -hmm. um definitely want to want to see more of that and we'll definitely have more of those conversations here on rush vibes as we go forward before we jump into the movie review did you have anything that was on your heart you wanted to discuss because we can jump right in i think i'm just tired (laughs) yeah we're tired it was a long week i've been physically tired and then you just add on what's been taking place over and over and over again um it's just exhausting it's it it is oh it the other thing was the i don't know did we address the gentleman in columbia who was harassed walking through his no we didn't yeah so it's like it's it it just keeps there's always something in in the news and it's becoming it's not becoming it's been exhausting but it's just like can we get a week can we get a month can we just get a chance to heal a wound before you know we tear into it again so that's kind of where where i am i'm also sleep deprived i'm I'm partially caught up but it was just one of those weeks one kid didn't want to sleep and then the next night the kid who didn't sleep the first night slept and the second kid didn't want to sleep. So, um, I just feel like I'm at the point of adulting where I just live in various stages of exhaustion. Um, it's like, I'm not as exhausted as I was yesterday, but I'm more exhausted than I will be tomorrow. I don't know. So yeah, that's it. Yeah. The South Carolina thing was interesting because, uh, someone local, you know, Columbia is not, but it marks like two two stones throws from <laughs> maybe like three <laughs> three stones throws from Charlotte. It's about it. I used to make the drive all the time hour for and a half, right? for one of my jobs. Yeah, about an hour and a half, hour forty five. Uh, it was it was interesting because like most you know in, interactions that that get caught on on video that they go viral. You know it it the video comes in you know well into the the uh, confrontation and you just see this teenage kid you know talking to this really big. <laughs> really big, big guy to? who's uh, upset and is in his face, and you have a, a wife off camera speaking to him as well. And you know, it's sounds seems like he was walking in the neighborhood, and maybe he had some words with somebody else. And I guess they're a tight knit community, and somebody called somebody else, and then that's how we got the uh, the officer or sergeant, whatever he is, um, in, in the kid's face and. You know, he, he was arrested eventually, but, um, you know, there was actually a protest or, or a rally or whatever, whatever you'd want to call it at, at their house. And I think it got a little, uh, I think they had to get escorted. Out. They had to get that as you get escorted, it got a little carried away. They had some damage done to, you know, light fixtures and I think maybe something got thrown into a window. Oh yeah. Then, and that's unfortunate, but it sure is. <laughs> it, it is unfortunate. Um, uh, but you see <sighs> how the most unfortunate, yeah. Well, I mean, you see how people are are letting letting their voices be heard and, mm-hmm. and letting other people know that certain things are and, and aren't going to be tolerated. So, you know, I, I think he'll he'll think twice before you know no, he they, does something something like that. Well, he I don't know, might, but someone feeling. else won't, and that's the problem. The uh, like other people won't think twice. Like we grew up with the whole. I feel like at least my parents taught me to. If you haven't made a mistake and someone has made a mistake, learn from their mistake. Like that was my, the big thing for my dad. Like you can avoid getting into certain scenarios if you learn from someone else's mistakes. So I'm really just like, y'all, can you see your fellow brethren um, and see the trouble they consistently get into and say, I'm not trying to be that guy. I'm not trying to be on the news. I'm not trying to, you know, displace my family because I think thought it was necessary to harass a young child who or a young kid who was walking through the neighborhood like it's it's ridiculous it's it's becoming it's past becoming it is so annoying like segueing the other day 
I had a segue. A segue. I oh, had nice. a doctor's appointment and I took Savi. I wasn't expecting that. And the time of the appointment, the time that it ended, we went, we got lunch after, and I think we still had like a good hour and change before we had to pick up Solace from school. And to me, it didn't make sense for us to come home and then get comfortable only to pack back up and go pick her up. So, you know, there are some neighborhoods that we, we've been, you know, scouting, you know, waiting for the Lord to bless us. And give us the funds to purchase a home. So I was just, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm near here. Let me just drive through. Um, And it was sad that as I was driving through and seeing all these, you know, miscellaneous white families, they're out with their kids. They're, you know, they're unloading their cars. They're whatever. They're in their neighborhoods. Um, and the back, in the back of my head, I'm like, okay, here I am in this orangish car, a black woman just driving through these streets in this, you know, residential neighborhood. And all it takes is someone seeing me go up one street one too many times, um, or just, you know, driving too slow. And then they feel like calling the police. Part of it was my kid was asleep in the car and I was just driving around to keep her asleep. And I also wanted to see this neighborhood. It's a nice neighborhood. Um, They're building up some houses. So, you know, just scouting it out and seeing. But that's a thought that I have to have. Whereas a white counterpart, they're just going to drive through the neighborhood and they're going to wave and they're going to be friendly and whatever. And no one's going to bat an eye at it. But so that's that's. Granted, it's not an identical situation. I don't know all the de- like, I don't know the behind the scenes of everything that happened in Colombia. I know the sheriff had mentioned that the young man had been involved in some stuff, but he said it was not relevant to like he shouldn't have been treated that way regardless. But you know, you just don't. It doesn't take much for someone to take an unnecessary step and it affecting you. So like when you're black, these are things you're thinking about. And I don't consider myself a threat. I don't can I feel like I look pretty approachable, pretty easygoing. I thought uh, you were gonna stop with pretty. I'm like, well, yeah, sweetheart, you are no, you're very no. pretty. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but just because that's how I, how, how I see myself, that's not how someone else sees myself. Um, and I'm thinking like what scenario if a scenario happens that, you know, someone does call the cops. And says this car is driving through the neighborhood. What am I like? What's the story that I'm going to tell the police to make sure that my safety and my daughter's safety in the back of the car sleeping is intact to make sure that I can get to my kid's school and pick her up? So it might seem extreme, but this is a thought that genuinely crossed my mind. And I looked at street names to make sure I didn't go down the same street twice because I didn't want someone to say, oh, that's suspicious. Why is she, you know, is she casing the place? No, I'm. Well, I mean, I'm scouting, but not casing. And I'm trying to keep a baby asleep. Semantics. <laughs> so, I mean, people like unless you're unless you are it, you don't think about these things. So, that's just, you know, that's just part of my exhaustion that, you know, I couldn't even just drive through a neighborhood without thinking, okay, what's if something happened, what's my story and how can I ensure that I deliver it believe, like in in a way that's believable whereas someone where an officer will take me seriously um, and I won't end up on the next news story. So, yeah, it might seem extreme. It might seem like I'm being a hypochondriac, but that was a thought that crossed my mind. Yeah. It's heavy. You didn't tell me that. No, I didn't. You saved it for the pod, I see. Saved it for the vibe tribe. Um, for you guys. I can somewhat relate. I don't, I don't know that I... You know, because we, we drive down, we, we, it's kind of a pastime of ours. We go into neighborhoods that either we didn't know existed, like, oh, I don't know what this neighborhood was back here. We'll go down and look at the houses and then we'll, we'll circle out. Or if we're, you know, intentionally going to a neighborhood, like you said, to scout if, you know, should we uh, end up moving. Um, I don't know that I would ever say that I get nervous uh, driving through a neighborhood because when you live in a nice neighborhood and there's like construction going on. I mean, it's just kind of, I feel like it's common knowledge that sometimes people are going to, you know, ride through and, and see what, see what it looks like. But I, I mean, I, I can identify with always feeling like, you know, you need to be able to have your, your story straight and, you know, should you ever be stopped um, and be able to explain yourself, so to speak. And I think that just kind of comes from how we were raised and, and talks we had with our, with our parents. I know my mom always, when I would leave the house and I got to the point where I was coming and going on my own, you know, she was real intentional about 
you know, my appearance and, you know, make sure I'm not running with the wrong crowd because, you know, this whole guilt by association thing. Mm-hmm. And if you look a certain way and you're in a certain place at a certain time, you know, you can kind of be Nothing. lumped in. So, um, like most, I would assume most black men in, in, in this country, um, when I'm cop, when a cop gets behind me, you know, I, and if I'm driving, you know, my back <laughs> straightens up a little bit. I get 10 and two, you know, making sure my, I can see my side views and everything. Man, he's so annoying. Cop will um, be going the complete other way. Three like, lanes of traffic. He'll be like, five Oh, act right. That's all right. Act right, baby. Five Oh, um, but yes, yeah, so, I mean, I can, I can understand that. But you but. say, like, you know, you assume people have the common sense that if it's a new construction neighborhood. But I mean, Ahmad Arbery was running through a neighborhood this is with true. a new construction house. This is and true. And look, look what that got him. And now, this is true. I, was, I wouldn't actually go into a house though. <laughs> not blaming, not victim blaming at, no. at all. But I'm just saying that's. You know, but that's, I mean, people, do people I, do I that. Do. People no, I know, into, I know, it's a thing. We we walk through. I mean, when we were building this house. So uh, seven years ago, uh, almost it was just wide open. Mm-hmm. Like anybody could just walk up, and, and, granted, I, and we people were, were actually. It. I came in here like many yeah, times. People were actually like stealing other houses that had the appliances. They got the appliances with their package. People were running up in and stealing, stealing freezers and, and refrigerators and, and microwaves. everything. Microwaves. So no, I mean I, I know it's it's a thing because technically I think you're it's it's a totally legal thing to do because mm-hmm, while you know. it's being built. Mm-hmm. But I mean it's just certain things I wouldn't. I wouldn't do. Yeah, I'm not trying to get caught up. I wouldn't feel comfortable. But even more so now since we saw that with mm-hmm. the Aubrey, right? Like you say learning from others experience. from from others experiences is unfortunately fatal. But and it, and it is unfortunate that that's like tax on your existence, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's something that you constantly have to think about. Um kind of like that that James Baldwin quote. Um Yeah, no, it's it's that's crazy. I feel like I had a, a point that I was going to make, but I don't quite remember. I'm sorry. Um, no, it's it's cool. I wasn't I wasn't wasn't expecting that. Um, so, I think uh, unless you have anything else, we can take our first break and then we'll come back and then we'll uh, we'll do our movie review. Second movie review here on Rush Vibes. Whoop, whoop. Another Netflix down. movie as well. Come so, through Netflix. We'll be back. What's up, Vibe Tribe? What's up, Rush Vibes? Man, you guys know I love the podcast. I'm so happy for you guys. I'm proud of you guys. Um, you know, I'm just out here doing what I love to do. I was just finishing up Cousin Mark's episode on the way up to this trailhead. So you guys know I'm going to finish it up when I get back there. So I love you guys. Good luck with everything. David, be nicer to Jess, okay? Peace. All right, and we are back. Back. Rushed Vibe Studios coming to you not live. But recorded mm-hmm. and uploaded mm-hmm. and edited and edited very much. So, although lightly, lightly edited, we'd like to be pretty, pretty raw here. Nah, raw, I, raw's uh, a bad. Raw, no, raw's that's a poor word choice. I'm unless not raw. I say something very controversial, pretty, pretty authentic here on Rush Vibes. Yes, unless Jess says something controversial. He's really just trying to cover in case he decides to go for politics. No, not at all. I don't. I don't no, I don't think I want to do politics. Thank goodness, because <laughs> the way my college Twitter be looking. We just have to delete it. But. I think I did. I tried to go back and see whatever controversial tweets. Now I just complain to companies and complain about TV shows. But yeah. I am I'm, I know I've said and posted some things that would get me in trouble. And she like goes at Megan McCain like every no, single day. Megan McCain sets herself Every well. single day on Twitter. Like whenever I whenever I see my wife's but tweets com- popping up on my when, timeline, when, I just know I when know her it. hair looks good. I compliment her. Uh, I try to keep it balanced. Uh, I compliment her, but she she be on this like white privilege stuff that she doesn't want to acknowledge. Like makes it seem like she and I'm sure she worked hard to get where she is, but a lot of the reason why she is where she is is because of the the privilege of the last name she carries and who her father is. Um, And I think if you have privilege, you need to just embrace it. Um, The only person I let slide is Anderson Cooper because my man went out of his way to change his name. Um, And I don't know at what point people realized he was a Vanderbilt, but I just feel like if you have privilege... I was like... 
like two years ago when I realized it. Yeah, well, I mean, I've known it for at least five. Just, just stays breaking stuff I've, down. I'd to I'd be me. in the tea. I'd be in that drop, brewed drop in organic tea. I don't news. drink that regular Lipton organic. Um, so that's why she gets to me because she like she just says some off the cuff stuff, and I'm like, is your contract like? Is there no other white female Republican woman we can get on this show who has more? balance of sense and perspective um and can actually acknowledge your privilege like if you weren't john mccain's daughter i doubt you would have been on fox news i doubt you would have gotten an opportunity to be on the view but she just like she doesn't want to acknowledge that and then she'll just say some stuff so i I be fighting on twitter and i i'd I'd do it to her face too i'm scared of her she's just come at me bro anything else I like her mom though. I wouldn't. Oh, Cindy. Uh, yeah. yeah Cindy's cool. I, ro- I rock with her. Cindy's cool. You know what? They should swap them out, and Cindy should be the white Republican female voice on the View. I, I would, I could get down with that, because she's got, she's got logical sense. Anyway, I'm not trying to do this Megan McCain stuff. Um, I do do some mean tweets on Married at First Sight. I had that good one when that Derek Jackson stuff dropped. What did I say? I had said something like. It was that Ryan guy who wasn't who won't sleep with his wife, but like <laughs> he lets his wife do whatever she is doing to him. Starving, but won't. Clara but starving. A poor child just just free wants Clara. just wants to free, sleep with her husband. Free her. Um, and he was over here like they she had like fam- a men's. She's famished. <laughs> they had like a men's husband meeting, and he was like dropping all this marriage advice, and I was like, oh, Ryan yeah. over here talking like he Derek Jackson, and his wife is miserable. <laughs> Talk about late. having absolutely zero self awareness. My man was like, but you know, I, that I feel was, like I'm I'm doing pretty, you know, clear, pretty, when doing I pretty good. That and his was one of my highest like, tweets. It got what? like so many retweets, so many likes. Like, get like fifteen. Uh, no, no, it went. Don't do me like that. 15 retweets. Don't do me like that. 15 retweets and Jess was like, am I an influencer now? <laughs> Look, I was about to get an, uh, an affiliate link. I'm about to be up in there. She's I about to drop put- her solo. <laughs> like her solo podcast is coming coming this fall. Look look out for it. I should have put, I should have hashtag Jess, Rush Jess Rushing Speaks. Um, but yeah, that, that I, I get some good ones in there. I get some uh, good dicks. No, I have got, some good you got, Your social media wit is, is pretty underrated. It's, but it's like, it has to good. be live. Like it has, it has to be live. It's, it's but anyway, solid. that's enough about, about that extreme segue. I don't even know how we got there. Yeah. So do you want to do the bit? Do you want to do the bit? Do you want to explain the movie that we just watched? Uh, I don't know if I want to explain the movie. Uh, you can do the synopsis. I hadn't and heard can, of it. It, yeah. it David so, mentioned it. Uh, interrupting you as always shout out to cousin uh, Chenier who said um, I, last uh, episode I told people to put a thumbs down if Jessica does more interrupting and a thumbs up if I do more interrupting she did both she said we interrupt each other equally I told her I was very that's sa- just because I'm going to very, for tat. that's a very safe answer it is not controversial I, I need you to do Chen, I need you to do better Chen pick a side um I, I I did not hear about this movie either this has probably been the most removed I've ever been from Oscar season um, and just movies in general. Uh, I feel like we have our four or five things that we watch, and we've pretty much stuck to that and, and have watched an occasional movie here or there. But other than that, I haven't really known, seen anything that's been been nominated for the most part. Uh, Frank Garrett uh, actually text messaged me uh, and said, you know, this is a very short film on Netflix. You and Jess should watch it. I watch it. It's very good and love to hear y'all's opinion on it. So this episode is... Uh, <laughs> dedicated to garrett because we would not be talking about it if it weren't for him so um, oh and shout out to your pop-up in indian trail i saw that indian trail north carolina for yeah. anyone not in the charlotte with, with, area with the candles i need to re-up on yeah, a couple yeah we, we, we bought some you want to go ahead and plug it since you're speaking about it no i don't remember the name <laughs> i'm so sorry um because it wasn't a planned plug i just you know you mentioning his name i remember seeing in his story uh he and his significant other have a candle business and they are amazing. It's, it, they're, they're beautiful. Um, they do the, the wooden wick, which I love because it crackles and pops, um, like rice krispies and like a fireplace. So, uh, it smells so good, but I just remember seeing your table, seeing you guys had a pop up. Um, and I just wanted to, since we're talking about you and your recommendation, just shout you out. So, um, David's going to find the name of, your 
company and I'm just going to keep talking to try and fill time while we do this. Um, my memory is so short. I know one of the scents was lit ambiance. Lit, oh, I knew it was lit, but I couldn't remember the rest of it. Forgive me. Um, uh, but they are amazing candles. Um, I kind of I set you up. Uh, that's you my, did. That's my bad. You really did. That's my fault. That was a really bad assist. That's my bad. Um, I threw the oop and it went over the backboard. I wasn't ready. I wasn't even looking. That's my um, bad. But yeah, so if you're in it, the packaging was beautiful, um, and the products smell amazing. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll link it below if you guys want to want to check it out. Like I said, if you're here local to uh, the Charlotte area, um, they'll drive to you mm-hmm. and give you. Well, I don't get yeah, depending upon where you live. Yeah, I think we live relatively close. They drove to us and dropped off our order. Yeah, um, I don't know if they'll do the same. So I don't want to commit them to like <laughs> you <laughs> might have to do some DoorDash, get some hate mail, or I'm like, yeah, they're gonna put me to work. Be like, hey, since you told people we deliver, you the new delivery, yeah, you're the new delivery guy. <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah, definitely hit them up. Uh, they respond pretty quickly if you message them on on Facebook. That's how we we communicated. And and like Jess said, you know the candles and the and we got we got a couple or a candle candles. And a, and a bar. Uh, yeah, it, it's wax. I believe wax. Yeah, it, you, it was you, great. Yeah, it was the aroma was just mm-hmm. fascinating. Was, the house was just like seductive. Almost, almost put me in a mood. You know what I'm saying? It was to sleep. I was ready to go well, to sleep. Yeah, that comes that comes afterward. But um, don't do that. <laughs> we don't it's, a, it's an adult show We're married It's even an adult though, show We had a five year old last week I, don't have my I mean we're, we're an adult show That does Kid appearances Every once in a while Anywho but we put her to bed Before we talked about The, the adult stuff So uh, we watched Two Distant two Distance Strangers Netflix movie We watched it on Netflix We watched it right before uh, we, we set up to record this episode So it's fresh And um, spoiler warning we, we will discuss the plot And then we will give our Our um, impressions of mm-hmm. the movie and any themes and um you know metaphors and and underlying meanings that we we, we felt the movie had so it uh, stars a rapper uh joey badass two dollar signs just wanted to let everybody know it's not just regular i'm, I'm glad you it's clarified dollar, that because i would have been like uh, making Joey his bad yeah, making his acting de- debut i believe uh he wakes up in bed he had a one night stand so he was at the, the place of the woman he slept with. They have a little morning banter and he basically shows her pictures of his dog. So I'm trying to go home, get to my dog. Has one of those little cool doggy Cats. doggy cams that you can talk to your dog and then give it a treat if you know, if you feel inclined. So that was kinda cool product placement, I believe. Uh-huh. And um he walks out of the building onto the street, holds the door open for a guy coming into the building. Um a lady walks in front of him. He uh, walks over to like a, I think it's like a one of the bike holders or whatever, and opens his book bag to get some cigarettes out. Drops a wad of cash on the on the ground, lights up a cigarette, um, and he and then he turns and he bumps into a guy who spills his coffee. And they have a little interaction, but the guy walks off. And a cop walks up behind him, mm-hmm. and it's basically like, you know, what's going on? Ask him if that cigarette is actually a cigarette. Said it don't smell like no cigarette. Ask him about the wad of money. Then he says, let me see your bag. And the dude is like, no, because I haven't done anything. And then he shoves him up against the wall, puts him in a chokehold. Other cops rush up. He ba- and there are basically like three or four cops standing on top of him or sitting on top of him while the chokehold is being applied. He basically suffocates. Not the end of the movie. <laughs> the plot thickens. Even though that sounds like a very uh, common um, thing we've seen play out in, in the media, but he actually wakes back up. So it's essentially like one of those. Kim, what's that movie? Um, that girl who like kept dying on her birthday that came out recently, it was like a couple years ago. Um, basically you it's like a video game, right? You keep respawning, you keep resetting. And every time that he woke up, it would he would die, but it'd be through a different um different cause, but by police. So one time he was just shot in the back while he was running. Another time he decided not to go to the street, but stay in the apartment and cook bre- and make breakfast with the girl he had slept with, but the cops would it's not <laughs> I'm laughing because it's it's, ridiculous it's ridiculous but they they barge in because they're looking for someone in another unit uh, but they come into hers and they shoot him first and then they ask questions afterward seen it before mm-hmm. and um it, it goes through this this montage of him waking up again waking up again dying another way dying another way um so he eventually tries to just talk to the cop and he basically tells him like hey i know exactly what's going to happen so he points to like three or four different things that happen regularly in in the in the the lives before he, he dies and finally talk the cop into taking him home. And uh, they have a conversation on the way and they talk about, you know, why the guy became a cop and um, 
some things about white privilege and and how black people are uh, somewhat born at, at a disadvantage almost you know uh just compared to, to white people mm-hmm. building kind of on that whole white privilege thing cop drops him off in front of his in front of his house and then uh as the guy's getting ready to walk in uh the cop like says oh you almost had me or this is like the best one yet or whatever it says oh you thought you could sweet talk me or whatever and then he shoots him and then he dies and then that's how the movie ends so all that was in like 32 minutes and it was um it was a lot there was some humor in there obviously uh not obviously but there was some humor in there and there were some 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 funny moments but a lot of it was pretty heavy and uh reenactments of different uh, actual real life stories that we've seen play out in the media um, over the course of the last however many years, 20, 30, 40 years. So what was your reaction? I was exhausted. <laughs> it was the theme here. Yes. Tonight. Um, it was, I thought it was, it was good. What was exhausting is this happened 100 times, I believe, if not more. Yeah, I think more um, than 100. Yeah. And at one point, Maybe the third time I was thinking in my head, I was initially like victim blame. And I was like, okay, dude, you know what's going to happen. So let's, let's avoid it. Like, let's not light this cigarette. Let's not open our backpack. Let's not pull this money out. Let's just, let's turn and walk the other way. Is there a back door in the bed? Like I was thinking of all these other options to avoid this interaction. And after a certain point, I think I realized it's just inevitable. He's going to die. No matter what he does, right, wrong, he's going to die. Um, and I think that's why I eventually stopped enjoying it because I wanted there to be a happy ending. I wanted him to wake up, go through his little back and forth with the girl, you know, get out there and get home to his dog like he wanted to, and then shoot her a text and be like, hey, let's grab drinks later. But that never happened. And it, it was almost. The symbolism was no matter what you do, even if you know the scenario, how it's going to end, you can't escape it. And that stressed me out. And that was, it's weird to say that was almost traumatic for me. Mm. Traumatic. Yeah, traumatic. Because I, I, cause at, after a certain point, I think at the point where he said he was telling her that it happens 100, 100 times or 99 times, I think he said. Mm-hmm. I was just, I was like, he's never... He's never going to escape this. This is just his destiny, regardless of whatever he does. Um, and then at one point, as she mentions that she has a gun. And I remember thinking, well, shoot. <laughs> Take her gun and shoot him. Um, which wouldn't help the situation, because then he's the black man who shot the cop. But it, it, it's just... If you watch it, it feels a lot longer than 32 minutes. It did. It felt it felt significantly they, longer than They than definitely gave you a lot of content, a lot of heavy content. Um, they delivered it well. I did appreciate, you know, how it was presented um, and just how carefree it starts and just the turn that keeps going and it's like, and even at the end, the last scene where he gets home, or to his building at least, and gets shot, you know, it kind of leaves you on a cliffhanger. You wonder, is he going to wake up again and try? Is he, is, is, is that it? At what point is it over? And I think that's maybe the symbolism of it, that it's never going to end. It's just going to keep going, no matter how you try to control the narrative if you're a black man in America and you're, you're essentially just, or if you're just black in America, you're being hunted hmm. and you, you, you just, if there's a target on your back, you're, you're going to get shot. Yeah. Figuratively but, and literally, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, you talk about symbolism and, uh, it, it, it I, I saw a lot of, Symbolism within the movie and within a 32 minute window, like you said, it, it seems like the movie was saying it's inevitable that uh, black people are going to continue to have run ins with law enforcement, um, especially when you look at over policing. Right. In certain communities and look at certain communities that have way more contact with with police um, than than other communities and other demographics. 
Um, and obviously, you know, the first few instances of him dying were very specific. Right? I choke hold on the street, on the sidewalk, mm-hmm. while somebody's recording him saying, I can't breathe. Um, <laughs> a warrant or a cop busting into a wrong apartment and shooting somebody who's who's supposed to be, who's there. You know, they're in mm-hmm. the wrong unit. Like I said, shoot first, ask questions later. Um, and, then, you know, that doesn't happen all the time. Like, it's not, it's not frequent, but it's like, you know, we've, we've, we've seen it before. So it was like, I was able, I was like, oh, well, here comes the, the SWAT. <laughs> you know, they're going to knock down the door and, and he's going to get shot. Um, and I just thought that it was interesting that they, the symbol is one of the main uh, symbolisms of the movie was just like, no matter what, he just had to run into, into a cop. Like, no matter what, like it was going, it was inevitable. It was going to keep happening. Um, oh, yeah. Because that one scene where he... I think he talked to the cop, and the guy was like, all right, you've seen your future, just mm-hmm. go. And then he walks down an alley. In the corner, and then there are two, two burglars come in, and they run right past him. <laughs> well, he was just, just the wrong place, wrong time. He was time. just like, he was just like, you know F what? it. Like, and they then, got me. Yeah, and then he, and then he woke up again. Um, he was just trying to get home. Like, how many times have we, have we seen, you know, black people just trying to go, trying mm-hmm. to live their ordinary life, like trying to go home. Philando Castillo was just driving home from dinner. Um, people with Sandra Bland, I think, could just move somewhere, was going to a job interview um, or preparing for a job interview in a new city. Like, it, you know, he wasn't gang banging, no. <laughs> as, as they like to say. He wasn't up to, any, up to no good. He was just trying to go home to his dog. And, and a lot of times... When you see, when you've seen um, these interactions with police that you know maybe be unarmed man or unarmed woman um, end up dead, you know they're not they're not headed to you know a, a, to go commit a crime. Mm-hmm. They're just trying to go home. They're just trying to live their life like ordinary. Like he was a young, a twenty something year old man who had a night that a lot of 20, <laughs> 20 year old men and women have, and he was just trying to go home so he could feed his dog. And yet he kept having these fatal interactions with, with the police officers. So um, bringing, I mean, it was just kind of bringing back uh, that, that awareness mm-hmm. to the, the, the many different ways that um, black people have died at the, at the hands or the, or the multitude of ways that black people have died at the hands of police and a lot of the more publicized um, incidents or more publicized cases so like the Eric Garner and the, so many others. So yeah, I thought it was, um, thought it was interesting. And, and him, the last interaction he had with the cop, it was just like, you know, it's this confrontation. Also, it seemed like was inevitable as if that's what the, uh, the director who, who directed this movie, I think it was his first time, first film he actually directed as well. It was was trying to say like these things are going to keep like the, the the interactions between black people and police are just inevitable or confrontations excuse me are just inevitable in this country. Um, then it's like there's no way there's no way out of it, right? Mm-hmm. It's just you there's just no way to escape it. Um, but and I and I made a mistake. I said the last the last, the movie ended after he got shot the last time, but he actually wakes up one last time. Um, and he's just really motivated. He was like, I'm going to find a way oh, you know, yeah. Yeah, to, and to, then he's got to get home. Playing. And then he, and he puts his, puts his hood on and then he, and then he goes and then the movie, and the movie ends. So obviously that's trying to encourage like determination. Don't give up. You know, we can, you know, get through this and do it whatever way, but you know, there's, there's hope, you know, uh, is there, yeah. You know, like, like Mark said, um, on the last pod, you know, the the number of interactions that police have with people on a day to day basis is like in the millions, right? And um, granted, there are there are more confrontations that may in fatal or or may be like um, may may be harassment, um, not harassment, um, that's brutality, mm-hmm. I mean, improves brutality uh, that we don't hear about with with all races, but. You know, it's not, it's, it's not wide, it's not like rampant, mm-hmm. so to speak. 
um, like like he said, like just millions of interactions, and we're we're seeing you know one, two, three of these, you know, every so often. Um, and that's not to say that it doesn't. When we do see it, it doesn't it doesn't happen with regularity that it's it's someone of color. But in terms of just the cop killing someone, cop shooting, and um, you know, it's not it's not as as frequent as it may seem. Um, so I, I think there is absolutely. I think there is hope, and and as we've seen. Cops go on trial more. Cops get, and used to be, if there was a shooting, a cop would just go on administrative leave. And, you know, but we're seeing police officers who are involved in these shootings, you know, like either face pressure to resign immediately or they're fired immediately and then they're charged immediately or relatively, relatively quickly mm-hmm. uh, and, and are being held accountable. Like, you know, I know, I know everybody's like, you know, we're, we're not home yet with the Derek Chauvin case, but, you know, I'll, all indications point to a conviction with that. And, you know, hopefully that's, that's what will happen. But yeah, I mean, I think uh, there is hope and there has to be right. Like you can't, you can't say, well, this is just inevitable. This is just going to happen. That's, that may be one. I may agree with the movie in that confrontations with police are inevitable because I think, you know, as long as you have police and you have, you know, citizens, that's just bound to happen. Um, but in terms of there not being, not being hope, like you, that you just can't, that can't be a mentality. Uh, I think it just, it just can't be, you can't, that's not something that you can just kind of wave the white flag on. Where I struggle most two is twofold. One is, as I had mentioned earlier, after a certain point, I was, doing the defaulted this is what you should do this is what you shouldn't do um and that's it's that's kind of what we've been raised to do like okay if you're interacting with a cop just you know just comply just do what they ask you to do you know don't talk back blah 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 and you know you think of you you white counterparts and I've seen interactions with, with, I mean, I've worked events uptown and, you know, someone's drunk and rowdy and, you know, I've seen how, like, the confidence that a lot of white guys, white women, white people in general can speak to police. And it's not even just like, so, oh, I know my rights. It's just like, I don't give anything about you. Like, I'm doing this, get out of my way, leave me alone. And for the most part, they're not bothered. Um, and it's it's unfair to to an extreme that you know they they get to do that and it, of course it goes back to you know your parents raising you and telling you like you know you're i remember i wasn't allowed to go to the mall with with my white yeah, friends i couldn't well i couldn't go to the mall either just period i could go to the mall <laughs> with them but i couldn't go to the mall with my white friends because mm-hmm. a lot of them I miss a lot of them shop, shoplifted oh. and my parents were of the mindset like if Oh yeah. If you're, if you're out if with you're them, out, they're going to take the fall. Yeah. They're going to put it on you. Their parents mm-hmm. are going to put it on you. So I wasn't allowed to go to the mall. Um, and of course I was upset, but you know, in hindsight, I'm like, I'm glad because I, who knows what could have happened. Um, yeah. but it's not fair that, you know, I'm watching this guy go through these scenarios and I'm telling in my head, I'm telling him like, bro, just don't do this. Don't do that. Show him your bag. Like you, nothing's in there. Just, just do what is going. You have to do to survive, and and that's kind of why I, I said, you know, is there hope? Because it's almost it's it's just a game of chance where, you know, you going out and coming home safe each day is, it, it's it's Russian roulette. It's not. It, it's well, luck. I don't, I don't leave home. It's, but the rare time. But you know, a lot of times things that happen to people. No, it's, it's, it, it could yeah. be that one. Oh, I don't leave home, but that one time yeah. I ran out to grab sure. something, and now I'm I'm dead. I'm shot. I'm injured in some sure. way. Um, I'm breaking up a fight that has nothing to do with me, but I'm just being a good Samaritan, and now I'm yeah. paralyzed. So you'd be like them doormen <laughs> in uh, New York, and you just close the door. <laughs> just, Look, I, my name's Bennett, and yeah, I ain't in it. Yeah. Um, so it's just. It's not fair in that capacity. And that's, I'm not condoning that, actually, because that was kind of disappointing. Yeah, we were that supposed they to talk about that. We were, that they didn't do anything, and they just watched that lady get stomped. That's kind of unfortunate, but... Um, we can talk about yeah, that talk in about a minute. It. So so it's just, it's it's not fair the extra steps 
that we have to live by the extra steps that black so watching that and yeah he didn't give up hope he's like i'm gonna get home to my dog but for me it's like i'm really thinking like if the you don't know like it it used to be you know you're, you're raised in the church so it's like god you know let my going out and coming in be a blessing. And you understand that things can happen. A car accident can happen. You know, you can, you can be in a store and unfortunately, you know, a mass shooting can happen. Like these kind of things are usually not race related. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to race relations and policing, that is, is such a, a, a lucky card. Like you, you are playing life Russian roulette and you don't know if this moment I go out something's going to happen sure like I remember when I started working in um spirits I hadn't received my solicitor's license and the um the woman I was replacing she had sample bottles and our on-premise manager was like you know just give them the sample give her the sample bottles give her the sample bottles and you know she she's white and Puerto Rican and it it touched me, but it also hurt me um, because she said, "It." I think at the time it was 2017, she was like, I'm not going to give her sample bottles because it's illegal to drive in North Carolina with open bottles of liquor without your solicitor's license. And people are getting shot by police officers for no reason. She's like, I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I gave you these bottles. You got pulled over. You're trying to explain to a police officer why you get it things get heightened. So she didn't give them to me. And I was touched because it's like, she's thinking of my well being, but I was hurt because it's like, this is the thought she has to have. Mm -hmm. And one, not all white people or white passing people are going to have that thought. So I was Mm -hmm. at the advantage that she had that thought, but it's just, you always have to think extra steps ahead. Sure. And that's just, in my opinion, it's exhausting and it's not fair. It's not. Um, Let's take a break and then we'll, we'll come back and finish up with that. Wednesday everybody and you know what that means rush vibes rush vibes in the car rush vibes at the gym destination every week don't miss it YouTube podcast Spotify cash app rush vibes and we are back again rush vibe studios coming to you live not live I mean, did you want to finish? Did you want to finish? I know I cut you off. We um, obviously had, had to take a take a break. I, mean, I think that's that's really all I had. Just the thought that you know, you don't. That's not something you would have to think of. And you know, maybe if I was white, she wouldn't have. She probably wouldn't have thought of that, and she would have just given me the bottles. And in the off chance that I did get pulled over as a white female, I just be like, hey, I just started this new job. Uh, I don't have my solicitor's license yet but you know my counterpart's going on maternity leave and i need to have these bottles and an officer would be like okay you know just take them home get the bottles i mean get your license and you'll be good to go but as and and i it's almost twofold because i've had interactions with police officers that have been so lighthearted. i've gone on a police ride along the officer was so cool like i mean we were rolling up into <laughs> into like questionable situations and like we were speeding on i-485 and like he was letting me push buttons and stuff so like i've had great experiences with cops i've pulled branded vehicles on sidewalks and uptown and had full conversations with cops leaning on the car giving them snacks like i have i have been fortunate enough to only have one have had one uncomfortable situation with the cop um i one time hit a police officer with a door um and i got upset with him uh and you know for i fortunately he was black so it 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 worked in my favor because i was trying to figure out what he was doing there so i was like what were you doing there like how was i supposed to know you were there that's why i hit you at the door but in a completely different world in a different situation like that could have been the end of me so it's just until a majority of people get into that mindset they're not going to recognize the day-to-day struggle that comes with being black, the extra thought that comes with being black, the idea that the processing of, Oh, if I turn on this residential street, instead of taking the main street, could that make a difference? Um, You know, there have been instances where I think one time I was driving and my trunk 
wasn't closed all the way. And I went a little further because I wanted to make sure I was stopping. Not in a, I wasn't in a bad neighborhood, but I wanted to make sure someone wasn't going to question why I was stopping to close my trunk. So, you know, it's just the extra thinking. And I think for, you know, being a black woman who was once a black kid and a black teenager there's a lightheartedness and innocence in life that we are kind of denied because of the way the structure is and you know i feel as if and it's it's very uh it's evident that black children are are aged sooner so i'm very adamant to be particular in what circumstances I refer to our five-year-old as a big girl and remember that she's just a five-year-old because, you know, and it comes from even just little things like, you know, it, what she's wearing, what kind of pose she's doing and trying to make sure that, you know, it's easy for you could take a little black girl and a little white girl, put them in the same outfit, and someone will say, the little white girl's cute, and the little black girl's fast. Like, she's dressed like she's fast. Oh, she's too grown. And that's that's not the case. We, we, we extract, I think even from our community, we, we are so used to forcing our children to grow up quickly and teaching them lessons that adults have to deal with that they don't get a chance to really be innocent, young children and and so i'm very particular about making sure our kids get the opportunity to be young and don't have to be aged too quickly and and i I don't want them to be naive and unaware of what's taking place like i want them to be well equipped but it's, it's such a tough balance of ensuring that our kids are kids but are also safe and protected and have the proper street smarts like our daughter is really witty and her witty, her wit can come off as rudeness and engaging with the wrong person who won't have the patience to hear her and listen. That can, that can be a bad situation. It can turn into a bad situation and it can escalate. And so it's like, there's so many extra things that we have to think about where, you know, I've, I've been in classrooms and some of these kids, some especially some of these white kids will talk to the teacher and I'm like, whoo, your butt's getting suspended. And it's like, you don't get recess. You took recess away from them? But like what you know cl- what classrooms are you in? Yeah, I mean things got he I, I, I went to predominantly white schools in oh. like elementary in Massachusetts. Oh, you're talking so. about when you were you Yeah, were when school. I was growing up. So oh, you mean like recently, like why are you just randomly going to <laughs> Little kids classroom. Yeah, don't don't say stuff like that. It's a little, it's a little suspicious. That is suspicious how you get people arrested. Yeah, so suspicious. it's just but then, you know, there were certain kids that were always um in house suspension, out of school suspension, detention. So it's just kinda like you know, in hindsight looking back at it, I see the bias. Um and I also see the bias and how I went out of my way to make sure that I didn't fit into that so that I wasn't victim of certain scenarios. Um, but it's just, it's not fair to black kids, especially black boys. Um, I think they have it the hardest because they, I mean, there are pictures, there are memes and stuff going around where it's like a picture of a baby, a picture of about, you know, a five, six year old and then a teenager. And it says, when do I become a threat? And that's heartbreaking. Because at one point, your little black baby is, is cute and adorable. And at another point, he is a threat and he's a danger and he's a bad influence and he is a predator in some capacity. So, you know, if we, we think our, our girls are getting aged and having to be mature, and then we also fuss at them for, having, for being mature because we put them in this situation, our poor boys. Like, it, there are very few of us who didn't have to go through that but then if you didn't have to go through that you're also in a scenario where you're naive to the world and you just you don't you see the world with shaded glasses and that's not good for you either so it's it's like there's almost no winning did i ever tell you about the time i got profiled was it by the cop that you knew no there was another time yeah i was in college oh do tell we um I was playing, I was, I played football in college uh, for two years. And after my freshman season, 
we had recruiting. So we we were D3, so you couldn't, they didn't, there wasn't like traditional scholarships and recruiting trips or whatnot. But if someone was interested in, in playing football at the school, you know, we had, I think, a weekend where they brought recruits out and they got to stay with uh, current team, current players. And we, we were tasked with, you know, I think they, they crashed in our dorm and then we kind of showed them around campus. And then I think it was like a day or two. It might have been like a Friday to Saturday thing. And then they, they went back. So uh, my roommate and I, uh, Dante, we went to high school together. So luckily I had, I went to college with someone who I, who I knew we had, uh, this one kid, I won't say his name cause I don't know if he's cool with me sharing the story or not, but, uh, we went to the mall, went to the mall in, in Greensboro, four seasons. And <clears throat> I don't remember what malls were like, cause it's been so long since I've actually gone to a mall just to go to the mall. Like if I go to the mall, I'm, I'm going for a specific, for a specific reason, usually to the Apple store. I love Apple. So we went, we didn't really have anything to do. We were college and we were broke. <laughs> so we just went to, to Four Seasons. We're like, yo, we'll show you. I think it's like three levels. So like, we'll just walk around. So it was me, uh, Dante, uh, and the recruit. And I think another another kid. I think we each had had a recruit. And it was four, four black, black males walking around the mall. So we were walking. We were kind of going in stores and then kind of kind of just putzing along. And I noticed that uh, there was this security guard, not like an actual cop, but a mall security. And he was just kind of not right up on this, but he was just like around. You could kind of notice every time you came out of a store, he was like a couple of stores back behind us. So you actually, we, we got to a point where we were trying to figure out where we were going to next. So we, we sat down on a bench and um, we were just kind of texting some people. And he walked up to us and he said, hey, guys, um, I can't remember exactly how the conversation went, but he was basically saying that uh, he noticed that we hadn't bought anything. And I was like, have you been following us? And he was like, yeah, he was like, we have a, we're trying to cut down on gang activity. Just blunt. Like he just said it. <laughs> like it was just, it was just blunt. I was actually, was appreciated that he was, was so forthcoming. He said, we're trying to cut down on, on gang activity here in the mall. And he said, oh, we have a rule that you have to buy something within like a certain amount of things, within like an hour or whatever. Um, and it sounded bogus, even as like a, as a 20, 21 year old kid, uh, that didn't sound like any mm-hmm. rule that I'd, I'd ever heard. I've been to malls, Four Seasons Mall actually, and it had been there longer than an hour, I hadn't bought anything and nobody threw me out. So I said, said a sour, I was like, well, I said, that doesn't sound right. He was like, yeah, he was like, if you guys don't have at least a bag in your hands, like within the next 15 minutes, like you gotta go. So, me being the smart ass that I am, I went to like the nearest store. I was like, I just need a bag. <laughs> and they were like, what? They were like, we can't just sell you a bag. I was like, tell me how much the bag costs. I just need four of them. And like, you're serious? And I said, yeah. So I gave them like a couple bucks and um, I went back to meet the guys. But by that time, they were being escorted out. Uh, my boy Dante, if you know Dante, you'll, you'll, you'll know why this is funny. But he was like waving back and he's like, yo, Dave, <laughs> like, we, get, <laughs> we get thrown out. So I ran up and caught up with everybody. I was like, yo, we got these. I said, I got our bags. And they're like, no, nah, it's too late. Um, so basically the, the rent cop had called the real cops. And I guess I told him that we were being disruptive or whatever. So we got escorted out. And um, it almost ended up being a lot worse because the recruit, he had said something smart. And the, and the actual cop got into his face. like, Oh, you got a real smart mouth or whatever. So I had to jump in. And I was like, yo, come on, let's, let's chill out and let's leave. So uh, I, called my, I called my dad and I told him about it. And we, we had kind of pursued it a little bit. Uh, like I told him, I ended up telling my football coach and he wasn't happy about it. But we ultimately, it was funny because we, actually when we were out, outside, uh, I wanted to speak to the, the rent-a-cop supervisor. And I was like, yo, I need your, I need your name and I need, I need a number for somebody to call. He was like, well, you know. He's like, I, he's like, yo, it's my last day. <laughs> oh, like, now it's your he life. Knew, he knew it was some shit. So he was like, yo, it's my last day. So I'm not, he was like, you take my name, but... I'm not in it. Like you said, Bennett, and I ain't in it. Um, and I got the, I got the rent a cop's name. Uh, and we, we followed up with Mark with the head of mall security. I was like, no, there's no rule obviously mm-hmm. that you had to buy something. And so we, we, we ended up, it, we just, we ended up letting it go. And that's so kind of, that could have been a defamation of character. I, 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 it's, it's one of the few regrets I have. And I, I haven't had a lot of interactions with or confrontations with police or even fake police. Um, but, that one, I, I kind of regret that, that we didn't actually see it through. Um, and honestly, it didn't, it didn't bother me until 
I think until I was actually out of college, I was just thinking about it randomly one day. And I was just like, how am I perceived to have the potential to engage in gang activity simply by existing? Mm -hmm. Right. Like that. I think that that was when I realized when I actually like sat, just sat and thought about it, I got really upset. And it's like, I, I, there may be times where like nobody, some, you can't always like know exactly what you're going to buy. So sometimes you have to walk around and mm -hmm. until something speaks to you or you finally buy something, or maybe you're there with a friend, you're being social, you go to the food court. Like, it's just, it, it, it is one of the few times where when in young, when I was as an adult where I was naive and I realized like, this is how some people perceive you. Yeah. By default. And just, just by, I, I didn't have the locks or anything. I just had a, had a little, I used to cut my hair and I used to just one gear one or uh yeah, gear one, just take it all off. Like, cause I know some people look at dreadlocks and they're like, Ooh, but nah, I was just there with, with three friends who just happened to we all be the same complexion. And we were told that we had the potential to, to be engaging in gang activity just by being there and being black. So that was rough. Uh, it, it, like I said, it didn't hit me until a couple of years out of college when I actually thought about it. But yeah, that's my that's my profiling oh, wow. that's my profiling story. Uh, moving moving away from that, unless you have something else you wanted to. I mean, I got stories for days, but we can. Yeah, we can we can do a, a tell all later <laughs> special episode, not an emergency because I'm I'm we, we don't I'm, I'm exhausted with editing podcasts. But I wanted to go back to the movie because uh, I've seen this this theme here recently uh specifically on twitter and i i kind of get it but i kind of don't but basically it's no more black pain movies like we're tired of seeing movies with uh that that kind of um uh monetize black pain that that um uh, black americans in this country have experienced mm -hmm. and i understand where the sentiment may come from but I do like to call a spade a spade and say that that's bullshit. And the reason why I say that is because Moonlight won Best Picture a couple of years ago. And people hated on it because, oh, it's just about, it's just a soft black gay porn movie. That's all I saw. Oh, this is the best movie? Two black dudes who, who being gay? Very homophobic type stuff. And it Side got, note, I wa I wrote a paper yes, on Moonlight and I got an A. Yes, you did. Perfect. It was, it was it, 100, right? Yeah, it was an amazing... Actually, I yeah. reread it recently and I was like, wow, yeah. I wrote this? Anyway. Sorry. So, uh, and, and, and I've seen that, right? Um, and that it, it was a movie that that spoke to a specific thing that, that black people have to go through in this country. Um, that's not someone being killed by the police, right? That's not about slavery. It was a unique take on a topic that is kind of like taboo in the, in the black community. Mm -hmm. um, we clown Tyler Perry, right? Tyler Perry shows and Tyler Perry movies. Now I laughed at the, I'm just the, done I with laughed, the wigs. I laughed at the wig too. The wigs are, are hilarious. Like, come on, but the, Tyler. But he tries to, have, tries to have original movies uh, that don't speak to gang banging, don't speak to being killed by cops, but we clown those, right? We hold, I'm not done yet. We hold up shows like Snowfall, Power, right? The Wire. Wire is one of the greatest, like, greatest shows ever. I, need to I got it. no problems with The Wire. I love The Wire. We watch shows like Real Housewives, Toxicity, just I don't encouraging that. it. Right? The Bachelor, The Bachelor at Married at First Sight. We, we eat up Toxicity. So we can't say, I'm tired of all these black pain movies where except for when we want to watch things that have been a pain to our community, things that have uh, played a part in us being stereotyped and generalized like drugs, like toxic relationships. All right. So I just want to say, I, I, I can, uh, I understand. I get it. Like 12 years of slave was hard to watch. Two distant strangers was not easy to watch, but you can't also tell white people that they need to understand what it's like to be a black American. And when depictions of what it's like to be a black American are offered up, we shun it and say, I don't want to see any more of this. You tell white people, go Google, go do your own education, go do your own research. 
art imitates life, right? Mm-hmm. Well, here's art imitating life. And we're saying we don't want to see no more of it. So, like, we can't have it both ways. I think it's just a, it's, it's balanced. I think, like, so for me, the hopeless romantic, and, I, and I'm using this statement generally. I'm not using it just towards, like, rom-com theme. Um, I, my black experience is different from yours, is different from my cousins. Is it, it, it varies. You know, I grew up in suburban Massachusetts. And, yes, I had my, my issues. But, you know, for if I really think about it, my... There, there are probably, there aren't that many, my, my struggle is nothing compared to that of someone else in a different sure. demographic, in a different environment. Sure. So, you know, I grew up in a two parent household, um, a happy, for the most part, a happy household. You know, we weren't wealthy by any means, but you know, for the most part, anything that I want, I wanted to play violin. My parents, you know, were able to, you know, scrape up the money and got me a violin. So, you know, I think because a lot of us grew up in white culture, like I didn't watch a different world. Like the, the only real black show I watched was the Cosby show, sister, sister, um, what's what was he? Smart guy. Uh, and those were like later, like I'm, I'm, late 90s early thousands yeah. but a lot of the shows that my parents were watching Frasier Seinfeld these were white people shows mm-hmm. so you know I've seen white comedy a certain way I've seen mm. white drama a certain way I've seen you know white thrillers a certain way mm-hmm. and I guess for me I want to see that reflection from black people with without the you want to the see the cheap budgets. The you, want to, you want to see black, black comedy that's akin to white comedy. Not necessarily. I want it to obviously be relatable to me, but I think in some capacities, the idea of like the girl next door has always been a white girl. Mm-hmm. When I hear girl next door, I think of white girl in light blue shorts, long blonde hair pretty smile, straight hair, nothing Mm -hmm. like that's the, the girl next door, but Mm -hmm. the girl next door can also be a black girl. Sure. It can be a black, a a black woman. And I guess I wanted like a show like the wonder years, but with a black, there's actually a black version of the wonder years coming out. Is see, but like Mm -hmm. that's, that's what my heart desires. I want to see the situations that I was in. With people who look like me, those sitcoms I, have, I, I those, want, those sitcom, sitcoms have existed though. But it's it's not as prevalent. Like it's it's always on an isolated channel. We the CW, UPN, BET. Like we. It, it, okay. Okay. I guess I, I for me I want to see it. If you want if if you want a certain type of content and that content is available, then you need to go watch the content. You can't but sit not here and say everyone always has access to those con that content. CW is so, free. You can stream CW well, it for is free. now, but I'm saying there was a time where it's like you wanted to see yourself. Yeah. You needed to I'm have not, cable. I'm not going to sit here and say that throughout the course of his, t- television history, like black black comedies and, and black shows have always had like the same opportunities as white shows. Mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not saying that. I'm talking about now. I'm talking about in 2021 and within like recent history. There is content out there, the type of content that we say we want to see in lieu of black pain but people are either criticizing it or they're not, they're not going to where it is. They're not watching it. They're still watching things that build or monetize black paint. Like snowfall. We love, I love snowfall. Absolutely. I love it. I I I appreciate it too. It's black people selling other black people drugs and shooting other and killing other black people. And like in (laughs) highlighting the government (laughs) doing all of this, like it's literally like just, the perfect formula for black pain and we eat it up we watch i can't wait until thursday night when the girls go to bed so we can watch it so and there are other people like that saying it's one of the best television shows it ever it's like, an amazing tv show so, and the cinematography is great and they make idris's skin um look phenomenal and i don't need you talking about another man's skin i will i will talk about his skin his skin like the, clo- the lighting the close i mean he just looks hydrated and healthy and moisturized like you don't get that in a lot of you ain't gonna be using moisturizing and all that you can just say it looks nice you don't get that in a lot of 
when it when it comes to like cinematography and photography that, of black people so beside, i appreciate beside, that that and is beside the to point. your point you I, I never really i never watched the sopranos but you have a show like the sopranos which essentially um uh, from what i understand is the same concept it's you know gangsters and i don't know if they sold drugs but like they're killing people and all that but i think the problem is because of so many embedded stereotypes towards being black and black culture that's why these shows that are focused on black pain and gang life and drug life it 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 seems so heightened and i feel like there are white people who are like oh well you know they're always wanting equality but they're still doing this in the streets um because that's just how tom talks i just assume so i guess it's like i would love Sorry, more tom, whoever you are You're i would love there more black joy like i look at I think um, there's a new show on ABC and I was talking about it with your parents and it's called Rebel and it's got the, the wife from Married with Children. Uh, and I said, you know, I didn't feel like watching it because I'm tired of the white female lead and the black female sidekick. Like, how come no one stopped and said, let's flip this? Why can't the black woman be the lead? And I, I think I've heard later on that it's it's based on Aaron Brockovich. But there have been many things that are based off of a black person. And they've replaced it with a white person. Like Angelina Jolene played like an Iranian woman. And people were like, why didn't y'all just get an Iranian you know the, woman? You, you were watching that cop show on Netflix with Gabrielle Union and Jessica Alba. Mm -hmm. Where guys, Gab, are they co-leads? Gabrielle Union is the lead. Who gets more screen time? I'd say, who I would top, say who Gabby get, who gets, gets top billing. I would say Gabrielle gets more oh, screen oh, time. There you go. But that's Netflix. Uh, for yeah. me, it's mainstream Everybody, TV. No, first, look, if you want a Netflix subscription, you can get a Netflix subscription whether you pay it for yourself or you bumming it. Like 90% of people who have access to Netflix ain't paying for Netflix. So don't come here with that. You can get access to Netflix. But it's more than just that. It's, it's like, even the cartoons that I watch are child watch. You know, she's obsessed with frozen and it's elsa and anna and i remember my cousin and i were talking you know oh the disney princesses and people were like oh you know they got nala nala's this isn't, a lion this isn't, um, and this, then they talk about tiana this isn't tiana my, turns into a frog and gets a restaurant she doesn't get the this, happy ending so that's why i'm so sensitive because it's like you know even in cartoons like there's um Fancy Nancy. Did Soul come is out a, this year? It, huh? Did Soul come out this year? It did come out, but the, the was Soul the, a good movie? Soul was a good movie. Was Soul wasn't the lead character a black character? He was, but what I noticed was our child wasn't as engaged in it. Our, 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 I, I, even at five, only being in the world for five years, she's been exposed to so much white animation that when the shift is starting. It still can't penetrate. I don't know that that I don't know that it's fair to necessarily say because it wasn't a white lead that that's why she wasn't into it. She may just not have been into it because there are plenty of white based cartoons that we put on that she doesn't get into. So I don't know that that's fair to say. I just think that whenever a movie is given like the charity of having a black lead, especially animation, it's like Doc McStuffins. That's my girl. She gets kudo points. But I just think that there there's not enough effort put into glamorizing the black character. Like I was saying, my cousin and I talked about um, the the one actual black princess that we have. And she's, in my opinion, she's not really a princess because she gets turned into a frog and her end goal is to open a restaurant. Now, I love that she was able to meet that goal and that really shows perseverance and not giving up. But you know, all the white princesses, you know, they get their, their Prince Charming and their castle and their gown and all of that stuff. So it, it, for me, you know, looking back on it, it's like, well, why couldn't, why can't we get a black princess who genuinely, you know, who genuinely has a kingdom, who is, you know, somebody that little black girls can really aspire to be? Because it hurts me that it's Elsa and Anna that my, my child is always, you know, obsessing over. And well, that's, that's then that's on you and me because we're the ones who showed it to her. But I mean, we still, I we mean, we're all to. about, you know, our, our pride and our blackness and embracing, you know, the fact that, you know, she's black and she's, fr and she's Ghanaian and, you know, she's beautiful and we're playing brown skin girl. We, if there's anything, like I'm always complimenting her hair and how beautiful her curl pattern is. And I'm telling her, you know, how beautiful her skin is and that she, you know, I'm all, we're always pouring into her, but it's like, even with all the pouring that we're doing, there's still outside forces that can cancel and make our work even harder. 
and maybe it's just not something that you're observing because it's it's male to female as opposed to female to female because i know yeah, you know the barbie like i've like even with brown barbies when she goes to the store she's usually picking up a white barbie I've tried to like nudge her. I'm like, oh, look at this barber. She looks like you. And she's like, yeah, cool. Um, let's get this one. So it's like there's still forces that you're still you're it's constantly not. battling. You just want to be devil's advocate. No. So come on, Lucifer. No, it's not that. I just I just just one. I the the whole gender thing is is, is a bit of a cop out. I think. Um, it's, it's but not. but I know I just I just disagree. One my my point was that we can't say that we're tired of a certain genre of film and TV being out when that's the exact same kind of content that we raise up, right? So it may not be black people getting killed by police, but it's black people selling drugs to other black people, black people overdosing, it's black black hoods, crack destroying black neighborhoods, right? Um, and there is other, there the content that we seek is out there. It's just either we're knocking it or we're just not going out and seeking it and finding it. And it's not getting it's not getting the publicity that the other stuff is because the other stuff sells. Let's just be honest with it, mm-hmm. or be honest. So, I'm not saying that um, there's not uh, and there's not a, a, a higher ratio of white based character films in Disney as opposed to to, to black character leads. Like obvious, that's obvious. Of course it is. But what I'm saying is is that there are cartoons out there that have, you know colored character colored black Ooh. characters that are that are leads that we don't watch colored. and we're just we're just not watching them let's take a break and then we can come back and finish this up i'm gonna say this right now before you try to jump this this opportunist over here tries to jump on it i meant to say characters of color no colored slipped out he said colored i meant to say characters colored. of color <laughs> colored like of a like I'm an old, old white dude back in the, okay, in the 50s. Okay, Jim Crow. Um, yeah, that's all I'm saying. So I, Should I, I go sit in the colored section? <laughs> Should I drink from the colored fountain? Yeah, I'm going to need you to, I'm gonna need, when, when dinner's ready, I'm going to need you to come to the, this backsliding door. I will say, <laughs> I will say this. So we haven't finished it, but we started watching them. Spoiler, I might give some of it away. And them is on Amazon, Amazon Prime. And... It's so we're in this revolution where we're seeing more black thrillers, black horror. And I'm personally, I'm not a horror person. Um, I don't mind it because the, the thing about horror is it's usually scenarios that aren't going to happen. He's been trying to get me to watch it. Little kids are not going to climb into the sewer because dude has an umbrella. If, uh, if you tell him you got what's what's something that kids are really is like. A I mean, couple if you years told ago, it, that it, there was like an LOL surprise doll. <laughs> she probably would. It, it, it was down there. It was like like five years ago. It was like I got fidget spinners down here. And kids would be lining up. It'd be a line around the block trying Pro- to get okay. that to her. So, but in, in the actuality, if of- they had if if it was down there and he had lemon pepper Lou wings from Magic City, I'd be all up, I'd be all up in that sewer. Okay, bye. Me go and, go me float. And, me and Alan, we be uh- we be some. Lemon pepper Lou floating fools. All right. So the reason why I mean I'm not a big horror Shout person. Out to Magic City. Because I just I like to control my my emotions and my heart rate. But I I know it's not real. Like I'm sure an exorcist has taken place by someone's Catholic priest. Exorcism. Um oh, excuse me, an exorcism has taken place by someone's Catholic priest. Wait, what uh, what, what is it? what relevancy does that have? I'm trying to show like, you know, now that black actors and producers and directors are making black thrillers the thing that bothers me most is that a lot of them are with the exception of get out and us which are extreme things that would never happen them is traumatic to I would me put, i wouldn't say that get out couldn't happen <laughs> I'm just saying. true it I, probably I, I it's probably currently happening right now um, um, well, well, one, one thing is, is important to understand is that hollywood is a very copy copycat industry so if one thing sells and it sells really well other people are going to try to imitate it but so, the, the the point i'm trying so to make is them is is a horror but it's based on actual events like even though it's an extreme because you know they've they've got 
ghost and they're being haunted yeah. like black families infiltrated communities that they weren't True. welcomed in they were harassed they were abused they they were they were traumatized so when i watch it yes it's it's supposed to be entertaining for me it's it's almost inflicting trauma because i'm thinking this actually did happen to someone yes again elements of it are extreme like the the little slender guy um I don't think we've ever actually confirmed that that's a man. Yeah, we don't know who he is. The Slender Guy. I I told Jessica it reminds me of Slender Man. The little (laughs) little graphics. Now I'm calling him that. I I, I could hear hear somebody like Jessica could sneeze in the middle of the night. I'm like checking the corners of the room, make sure Slender Man ain't over there chilling. So so I guess that's that's the what overwhelms me because that's this this is reality that yeah we, i mean we've added a spin to it because i feel like when you think of you know nightmare on elm street like it ain't really ha- like it's this is someone's imagination well i mean but with black horror if this is based off of things that actually happen I mean, there are, there are true there are true stories told or, or based on true events or inspired by true event stories that are that are made into movies all the time think about the zodiac killer only killed white women or white people, as far as I'm concerned, white people still went to the movies to watch it. I have, I had a, <laughs> what? I had, I had a, a, a rebuttal that I was going to make that's, that would have been so politically incorrect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm gonna just keep that. Yeah, but keep um, if your spirit kin with me, you'll probably know where I was. So I mean, go. I, I'm not here to say I reject the the notion out of hand, right? Like I understand, like all right, like can we get some some black joy movies or some black enjoyment movies? Um, I think. Just in general, a lot of the movies that have been made recently, a lot of the movies that are, you know, critically acclaimed have been like just pain and suffering, just regardless, not necessarily black people, just like, just in general, like just the base of the, 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 the plot itself is just a lot of suffering and sad and yeah where, what happened to rom-coms yeah where's and, and, matthew mcconaughey like come on back he's somewhere in lincoln navigator um drinking or oh, teaching all oh, right uh so i mean I, I understand i'm just saying we can't like it's okay to say i prefer not to watch it but you can't you you have to be able to look at it with um in 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 with some objectivity and realize that hey i'm saying this but a lot of the the black shows that we lift up that we go crazy over that have like cult followings are still perpetrating a lot of the same stereotypes that we're saying cause our community's pain. Mm -hmm. And if we're not acknowledging that, um, then we're just, we're just hypocrites. True. I mean, that was, and I think that that's something that, that we need to do. And, and, and also keep in mind that a lot of these films of black pain that we're putting down are introducing new actors and actresses into Hollywood. Like these are some, some characters, some actors and actresses are getting their, their, big breaks mm-hmm. in a lot of these films and we can't say we want more diversity we want, want more black people behind the camera in front of the camera in hollywood like it's 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 kind of like a double-edged sword mm-hmm. like yeah i don't want to see all this black pain but at the same time i want people to get on because once you get in you know your career can go in any number of different directions and you can make any number of different movies um but you're kind of like at the mercy of whatever your big break is so i, just I try not to put opportunities like like Issa Absolute. Rae is doing an amazing job, Absolutely. and the only thing that she but she Issa lost Rae, me. Issa is, Rae did, but keep in mind it took a number of years for Issa Rae to get where true. she is. But she lost me because Lawrence now has like it could have been perfect. But that I feel like that could happen in any. It could have, but any, I also feel race. like it didn't have to happen, and I feel like. It, it seems more like a lot of people are upset because it seems more like it falls into a black stereotype. As respons- I, as I, responsible as Lawrence is, you mean to tell black me people he, are not the only are not the only race where. <laughs> but we are the ones who get sex, attacked about it. And have babies out of wedlock. That's but we not, are the ones who are. It is held against us at such extremes because of the historical attachments like you had men who were being moved around from plantation to plantation to breed so like there's so much more history to it so i was so hurt because it was like all right they finally gotten themselves together they can work and now you're gonna throw this illegitimate baby into the mix so it's like dang 
Illegitimate like, babies are not a black thing, though. They're they're not. I'm not saying they are, but it's it was such a predictable, stereotypical storyline. But you haven't watched it. She and Lakeith were in um, the photograph, and I thought that that was an amazing film. And it was it, it was the for me as you know, like I said, the rom- I love the romantic. I love the happy ending. That gave me so much black joy. Now people tried to come for Lakeith and say that he was like the villain. I was like, nah, I'm not gonna let you guys do that because it was so, it was such a relatable reality. And I, like, I finished that movie and I was just like, oh my gosh, I want another black movie that's gonna give me the same emotional joy and high that I just got from here. So it's like, it can't just be Issa though. Like, we need more options. We need, we need, other people can get their big break. From are you looking for these films? Or are you looking for these films with A list celebrities? Because there's a there's a Look, difference. I don't know celebrities by from their names. Like I know you all know the Issa. old I know Issa. And Issa is the example you gave. So again, I ask, are you looking for but is Issa are you really looking, A list? I feel like she's like B plus. If you're talking about if you're talking about black maybe B. someone who has the capability of putting together a show, producing a show or starring in a show, then yeah, I think she's an A list black actress. Um are you saying you want more from them, like the creme de la creme, or are you saying you just want more of these these genre of films, period? Because those films are out there. I promise you they are. They're just not starring Issa Rae. They're just not, they're just not directed Rae. by Ava DuVernay. They're just not starring Denzel Washington or John David or Zendaya. Like, But they're, they're we, out there. So just what, like we start at the top of the episode where we're talking about, you know, the the Russian roulette of going out the you know constant seeing sh- like like so much of our reality is already pain so it's like it would be nice to turn on the TV on ABC CBS sure. NBC and see a legitimate happy black sitcom it would be nice to you know have a decent drama I feel like Tyler Perry has or has had several of those no nah, but they're they're always like. <laughs> They're always slapstick. Like See? I don't like that kind there of comedy. Go. I don't like slapstick comedy. I don't like the foolishness, Mr. Brown. Like I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't. That's just not my preference. Mm-hmm. And even his dramas, like The Oval, they're doing a lot in there. Like First Lady and the President, just like boxing and fighting each other and bruising each other up. Um, so I, I, I guess I am being particular, but it's like I've seen the standard met. I just want I just want us to have an even playing field. There was a, there was a show to- there was a show on Fox a couple of years ago or a few years back about a uh, a black uh, teenage girl um, pitching I think for a major league team. It's called, oh, I think yeah. it was called Pitch. Yeah, I think it got canceled like its first or second season. I don't think anybody watched it because it wasn't for some reason it was a black female lead. She was young, uh, but it didn't get the following that Insecure got or that. Um, you know, any other like Blackish got for some reason because it wasn't the normal mm-hmm. thing that we're used to seeing. Um, and she's a good actress. She's in something else now. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, like I said, the content is out there. It's there. You just have to either support it. Like you have to go find it um, and support it because if something is doing numbers, it's going to be on television. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be on television for a sustained amount of time. And whether you're streaming or whether you're watching it on broadcast television. But you know, if you're not, if people aren't going out and finding that content and supporting these these you know maybe smaller scale creators who don't have the big flashy names or who can't command the big the big box office budgets, you know, then you can't really. Be, I just want us to be. I just want us to be honest with ourselves, mm-hmm. and I want us to be able to hold ourselves accountable and see where we may be being a little bit hypocritical. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that I can't understand why people are like damn like another movie like Brother getting shot, but like I, I this week. <laughs> I've literally seen way more of black black men or black people being shot by police or being harassed by police or being um you know being examples of police brutality than I cared to ever see within a week of, you know within the span of a week mm-hmm. for the rest of my life like I could never see one of those and I've gotten more than more enough than in this in this have. past week so I get it but all I'm saying is like just make sure what you're asking for is lining up with you know your actual viewing viewing habits. This is all I'm saying. That's it. We've gone. This is the longest episode of Rush yeah. Vibes. This oh, is actually the longest how, publici- the longest. Yeah, I was gonna say this is how long our like our practice episodes, episodes would used be. to be. It's because normally we'd be fighting. 
<laughs> we we low key not, fought. Not, not, we, not physically. We just, disagreed a little bit. We disagreed. Um, I think, especially when it comes to entertainment, we have very different like polar opposite opinions. And yeah, my, like, t- my taste is better. It's not. He's such an elitist. And unless someone tells him to watch something that I've already watched, like he won't watch it. Like, was it Garrett who told you to watch? Um, was it her behind her eyes? I had watched it and he I like it, yeah. showed no interest. And then his I tried boy, to watch. I tried to watch it. That you know, I couldn't. I couldn't get into it. So maybe I have. To, I have to go back. But I, I watched like elitist. twenty minutes of it. I was having a cigar and some bourbon too, so I was like really relaxed, and I still couldn't get into it. So I don't know. It's he not just looking good. Understand English. It's not looking good. I'm turning the subtitles on. It's in English. Oh well, then I understand it. What are you talking about? I was saying I meant British English. Oh, I turned the subtitles on. Cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> not doing this. A spot of tea. Not not doing this. Yeah. No, nah, this is definitely the longest episode. I may have to be like, I may edit that first like whole segment out because I don't know even remember what we talked about at this point. It might just have to be two episodes. Ooh, and we want to we have to record once. That's true. We may may cut into two because we could probably be at about an hour each now uh-huh. at this point. Um. Thank yeah. you for listening. Thank you for listening. If you and made give it- us feedback, I want to know other people's opinions. Yeah, especially. Um, this one because you know entertainment is is a big you know it's a, it's a big space. A lot of people love their you know whether you're consuming uh, whether you're following an influencer like on social media or whether you're consuming you know uh, small fi- uh, short films, very small creators on YouTube or, or Vimo, Vimeo, whatever it is, mm-hmm. um, or you know whether you consume like traditional content like streaming platforms, television, movies. You know it, everybody kind of dabbles in it. You know, for the most part. So we'd like to to hear your opinion. I will um, give it to all it, American. It all American is is quality. You know, what's funny is um, my brother Daniel tried to watch it and he could, he said he couldn't. Cause, <laughs> why? Because it's not realistic. He said it's just it was it's when you're when you when you have content on certain channels, you can only go so far with certain subject matters. Um, in terms of you know pushing the the realistic aspect of it, and I, I think. All American just it doesn't quite do it for him. Like if All American was on, like USA or FX, like they could do a lot more than mm-hmm. what they than what they do because they're on the CW, so they're kind of they're kind of handicapped a bit. I'm still trying to figure out what grade everybody's in because I'm like y'all real mature yeah, over here going yeah, to rehab. Like, like, as a sophomore, maybe it's Beverly Hills, maybe it's Beverly Hills kids. I don't know, but I'm trying to think like I wasn't going through all this when I was no, <laughs> 16, like not even 17, for, like not even ten percent of this. I was just trying to convince and my parents to give me some Air Force Ones, and y'all are over for- here. Watch out for the Black Forces. You know what that means. When they come around the corner, the Black Forces, you might want to watch your, watch your pockets. We're in the plastic chokers, and y'all pockets. over here stressed over. Yeah. That's my show, though. So I, I, would, I, I stumbled upon All-American on Netflix when it was actually going to be canceled mm-hmm. by the CW, but people started watching it on Netflix, and I would consider All-American a black show. Uh, yeah, it definitely and, is. And it got it actually the, due to the Netflix bump, quote unquote. It mm-hmm. actually CW actually it renewed back. it for another season, and they've been renewed for another season. So as I'm saying, stuff is, is stuff is out there. You just got to go find it, and you got to support it. Um, but I, I would anytime I would sit down, like if Jessica was at, staying the night at her parents, or was at her parents for the day, or she went on on a trip or whatever. I would pop down on the couch. I would just watch All American. Like I would just keep replaying You'd open the first up season. Netflix and it'd be like continue, <laughs> continue watching, watching All American. I'm like, bro, how was, many times you gonna watch these? Certain episodes? shows they just speak to you and they hook you and you just you just rock with they it. They did. And they did do a great job with that show. The story that's, writer sheets. That's my uh, that's my joint. Um, but yeah, if you've made it this far, congratulations because you are a Rush Vibes super watcher or listener. Because we you, appreciate the dedication. You are a trooper. But we really do. Um, I really want other people's opinions on things. On yeah, that, that would be great. Either comment here on the, and leave a comment here on YouTube or, you know, find us on Instagram at Rush Vibes or uh, on Facebook at uh, Rush Vibes and, <laughs> and let us know what you think. We don't want to just be the only we, we obviously the whole reason the, the podcast exists is so that we can give our opinions. But we want this to kind of be, you know, something that's bigger than us. Um, kind of like the reason why we had that conversation with my my cousin, Mark. You know, it's a, it was a topic that was way bigger than the three of us, but we wanted to be able to have a civil discourse or dialogue on a very, you know, hot button, hot button topic. So let us know what you think. Um, we can evolve our perspective. We can evolve our perspectives. And somebody, somebody just go follow us 
on Instagram so we can get can't number 100. Can't you just give this man his 100? I'm, Actually, I'm gonna two go cra- people so I'm gonna we go can crazy. get one on one. I'm going to go crazy. And I'm going to record it. Um, Because that means we'll be... The next thing is, is YouTube. We got to get to 100 on YouTube. We're at 64 thanks to the Cousin Mark bump, as I'm calling it. Um, but yes, please subscribe here. Uh, give us a like if you if you like the episode tonight. And um, follow us on social media. Uh, we will be back next week. Or maybe we won't because this might be two episodes. <laughs> yeah, we may, may or may not be back next week. But um, you will you will see more of us. We, we still have more, many more guests to come here on Rush Vibes. We are so excited that uh, this is something that we've started and we've continued and it's growing and we're just, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I'm kind of geeked out. Like I have to remind myself that this isn't my actual job. <laughs> and remember that I have something else I need to focus on for eight hours a day before I can start doing Rush Vibes, whether I'm editing or, you know, talking to people and getting feedback or, or making social media content. We do everything in house. We don't contract anything. Everything is done here except for like a lot of the original branding and logo work, which um, the very talented Missy Wilson did from Humming Bee. So uh, if you need anything done, I'll link her below as well. Shout her out. She's fantastic. So um, we'll be back next week with another episode of Rush Vibes. If you have anything that you'd like for us to talk about, shoot us a DM on Instagram. Shoot us a message on a messenger on, on Facebook. Like I said, Garrett, my friend, he gave us basically the main topic for, for what uh, we discussed. launched us into to all of our other subtopics. So, you know, we're more than happy to, to watch things, read things and, you know, chop it up here and give our opinion. So reach out if you ever feel like you want us to talk about anything and we'll, you know, we'll look at it and more than likely give it a go. So I'm going to go ahead and end here because we're at an hour and 40 minutes, 20 Ooh. minutes away from two hours. So about to lose my voice. <laughs> uh, anything else? That's it. I'm ready to go to bed. All right. So I'm going to let Jay Bilk slowly but surely come in here you should be hearing him right about now um we are still in a pandemic so be sure to wear a mask wash your hands socially distance if you've had vaccines great if not to you. still be safe we love you guys we appreciate every single one of you see you guys next week next week fresh vibes we out Ah